That looks good. And we have flowing product. Oh, I love it. Welcome back, everybody, to Satisfactory. I'm the Bearded OG, and in this episode, the plan is to complete our Starter Factory build. Sans the cosmetics, we'll we'll take care of that later, uh, but the functionality of the place. So I apologize for ending yesterday's episode kind of abruptly, but I really needed to kind of stop and think about how I was going to do the storage, because what I had originally planned, I realized, wasn't really going to work very well. So I thought really hard, and I thought too hard, and I came up with this monstrosity. All right, so <laughs> this is just an absolute monster here. Um, the problem is twofold. I, I've designed this and I want this to feed the product into the storage directly from the back. Um, so that's how I've designed it coming out of the factory, and I want to keep that design because I think it looks really cool. Um, but the problem is then that I can't use this type of a design here where everything feeds in on one side, and then, you know, the smart splitters sort it out. And also, in addition to that, all of that product together up there um, way exceeds uh, a Mark III belt's capacity. I mean, it's more than twice as much as it can handle. So even if I did hook it up like this through some kind of weird fancy schmancy merging or whatever, uh, we'd still it would still jam up on us until we can get higher level belts, and, and, and that's just not going to be efficient. So this is what I came up with to make that work, but this thing is ugly as hell, man. Uh, it would work. It, it would definitely work, so all of the product would flow in through, you know, each one of these lifts uh, in through the back, and the smart splitter would then, you know, send the product into the bin and overflow out the right-hand side. Oh, well, I didn't get that hooked up right, did I? Um, but it's just, it's really ugly and big and bulky, and, you know, we would need to set the base of the storage right here, you know, down right about... You know, even with this one, which means all of this clunky mechanical crap is going to be encroaching on our green space. And I, I did mention in yesterday's episode that I want to keep this here, you know, for aesthetic reasons. So I decided I'm not going to do this. Now, I am going to keep this design just in case I want to use it in the future in an, a place where, you know, I can maybe hide some of these logistics and make it not look so terrible because, it, it like I said, it will work you know, for a back entry product situation. So I'm not going to trash it, um, but I'm definitely not going to use it um, for this build. Okay, so let's save that because I had to make that change. And um, yeah, all right, so we have a plan B. So let's go ahead and clear this out and we'll get rid of the designer. The plan B is to do the splitting up above here and set up some some sinks on this little pad right here that I've created. So to that end, I rearranged all of these belts. I just did that off camera because, you know, I didn't want to go through that again on camera. So I rearranged these belts by essentially making them wider, you know, further apart. And then I put smart splitters up. And I think I even, did I set these smart splitters? Yeah, I think I've already set the smart splitters according to um, their product. Uh, I was up pretty pretty damn late last night doing this, so that's why I'm a little fuzzy about it. But yeah, it looks like I did set all that. Okay. So that's the copper sheeting. Cable and falling off the platform here. Um, the, last, the last item, though, this copper or the regular wire, I'm actually going to split that off onto the sushi belt. Um, and have that just feed through this system over to the uh, sink. Now, we're going to be 
we're going to be super close to the to the maximum capacity of the Mark III belt in doing that. So if if I notice some pretty major jamming on that, I may uh, I may have to set up like an independent sink for the for the copper wire. Now all of those problems can, will go away uh, when we get the the faster belts. But we don't have those yet, and it's going to be a little while yet before we do get the faster belt. So in the meantime, I want our factory to run as efficiently as possible. So we'll try this, and like I said, I'll keep an eye on it. And if it if it if it does really start jamming things up, then we'll have to set up an independent sink just for the copper wire because uh, the well the wire uh, the wire is one of the biggest quantities of uh, of product that we're you know that we're producing now you know what it just occurred to me an, another option there is just to to turn down the machines um and that could work too and now that i think about it right so what we could do is um we could just which is the machine yeah it's these that machine and that machine are the ones that are feeding us and that's 200 and yeah, it's 240 wires, so I could actually just turn one of these machines off now that I think about it. So let's just leave it the way that it is for now. And if it does start to jam up, then I'll probably just turn one of those machines off until we can, you know, get faster belts. So that's going to be our solution. And that way I can set things up nice and neat over there the way I had originally intended. Um, and everybody's happy. Especially me. Okay. <laughs> So, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get ourselves some smart, uh, not some smart splitters, some um, awesome sinks. And we're going to put one here so that the output is right in the center of that tile. And I want to move that in a little bit too. Yeah, that's good. And then we'll put the second one in the middle of this tile. And make sure that it's lined up with the other guy. Very good. Let's see. The powers for this is going to be in the front. Well, they're, they're actually on the side. So, yeah, we could actually power those from behind. All right, so let's do this then. Let's grab... Let's grab a power pole. And... Connect it to the line and put it right there. Okay. Then what we will do is we'll line up right there on that insulator and put you right here. And then do the same thing here. Good. Okay, so that hooks up our power to the sinks. Oh, incidentally, I, I made a few changes back over by our um, where our, our little 300 megawatt coal plant is. I hooked that back up to the network because I set Mark II miners on those impure coal nodes. And so now I only need one of those to continue our, our little steel production. And the other one can fully supply the 300 megawatt plant. And so that is now uh, back on the network, and now we have a total of 1,500 megawatts of power. So it's a beautiful thing. What we're going to do now is we're going to set down some mergers uh, right in front of here with the output going towards the machine, and then let's pull it back so it's right to here. That should work. And we'll put it... Mark 5 belt there. And then same thing here. Beautiful. So now we want to start with you. And we just bring these down to here. And run the lines into there. Except for that's not going to quite reach for this one. So... Um, why don't we just to make things look because I think I'm gonna probably keep this pad down here actually kind of like the way it looks well actually am I though I 
I kind of thought that I would. Yeah, I, I think we probably will. Just because... I don't know what else we would do with this area underneath, and it just kind of keeps things nice and straight and in easy access and all that sort of thing. But if we are going to do that... Um, let's go to architecture here and grab a, a small... No, actually, let's grab a large concrete pillar. And we'll at least do this. Yeah. I think that's I think that's okay. So we'll leave this here. I was gonna remove these, you know, these uh, foundations after we were done running this, but I don't think I will. Okay. So that being the case, uh, just to make things look nice and uniform, why don't we bring uh, the belt to here? And we'll have the, the little poles right here for all of them. Okay, and then that does not like that, so we'll get it out of straight mode. Straight mode can definitely be finicky sometimes. And then we'll hook this guy up here. And that should run into there. But again, we'll... Do a pull there for consistency. I know we don't need to, but we will. And then you can go right in there. And that looks nice and straight. Okay, so you get the idea. I'm going to do that uh, with these other three now. Okay, so now we will just sink all of this product that doesn't go into storage. Now, I think we're probably going to have the same issue where, you know, this Mark III belt's probably not going to be able to handle the entire flow of all of this. Um, and if that's significant... I might need to add more, you know, more sinks to handle this. I want to see if I can get away with not doing that, though, because the problem immediately goes away as soon as we can just upgrade that belt, even to a Mark IV. Um, and I, I can bring up uh, satisfactory tools and, you know, do the maths uh, on all of that, too. But um, I think we're going to just run with this for now. Now, if you're wondering about the ingots, those are actually going to be fed across the way to another... Uh, smart splitter storage, just like the one we have down there. Because remember, the, the the overall quantity of these ingots is pretty low, and we'll just sink it on that end um, along with the other items that I'm going to put in that group of storage, which will include our quartz products and our sulfur products and so forth. Okay, so I think we got all this set up the way that we want it. Now what we're going to do is go down here, and we're going to grab the storage blueprint that's just six storage bins has no splitters or anything like that on it and we want to set this over here and this will come all the way back up um well actually i want it to line up with the one across the way so it needs to come forward a bit but there i believe yeah that looks correct now, as far as the north-south alignment, we've got to get it lined up with these, um, these belts in the back here. So that means, just by eyeballing it, that we need the first opening to be right along this line here. So... We're going to nut, uh, what the hell did I just do? Oh, I get it. I, I guess I didn't have it nudged. So that's that line there. I'm pretty sure it's that line there. Because if we back up further 
and just kind of jump up and look. I know it's really hard to see, but I'm pretty sure I got that lined up correctly. Now let's go back and check this one, this one again, make sure. Yeah, this has to come forward again. And let's lock it in place. Okay. I will put signs on these later once we we get our quartz going, uh, which we're probably going to do as soon as we're done, you know, with this project. And, you know, I know I can also do the little trick, you know, where you just bring out a belt and you can see what's on there. Um, but I don't think I'm going to do that. I prefer the signs. So I think it's cleaner. So I don't think I will do that. Now, what we want to do is we already know how, you know, wh where the lift has to be. So it has one, two, three, four, five markers. Okay, hold on. One, two. Oh, no, wait. That one's reversed, though. But it should be the same. So it should be one, two, three, four, f five, just a little bit beyond the fifth marker. Right? So let's let's see if I'm correct about that. So there's second, third, fourth, just beyond the fifth marker. I think that's going to be correct. Let's grab you and I put these down bass backwards. Son of a beach nut. Let's try this again. So, uh, okay, there's two, three, four, and just above the fifth one. Lock that in place. Grab you. And that looks level. Is it straight? It's got to be straight and level. I would say so. All right, nice. Okay, so I'm going to hook up the remaining five of these. Let's do it. Now, um, we need to put... We're just going to put another one in manually for the screws. Uh, because you can only fit up to six storage bins on the blueprint. So we'll just set this one up manually. That looks good. And we have flowing product. Oh, I love it. Okay, cool. Um, now, next thing we're going to do is we're going to go over here. And uh, as you can see, I already set up a an awesome sink for this set of stores because we have now overflowed the concrete. So it just kind of uh, flows back around along this belt and goes into a storage bin, which we can also use to just manually throw stuff into the sink as needed. But we're going to make another uh, set up another sink here. Uh, why aren't you giving me a line? Oh, because I'm way too far forward. Looking at the wrong thing there. There we go. And looks like that's as far up against it as we can take it. If we needed to put a third one down, not we're out of pad. We'd have to add more pad. So we'll just uh, we'll work with this and see how well it goes because. Coming, what's coming out? Well, no, it's, as soon as we start doing the copper, though, this is going to be really full. Yeah, so uh, we better not add anything more to this sink because we're going to have to be able to handle that copper, even though I can, again, tone it down as needed. Good. Okay, let's get out our blueprints, and we want to go with storage uh, smart splitters on the left, which is this one here meaning entrance is on the left. Oh, I'm out of pipes. Let's go get some pipes. We'll stop off and uh, talk to Doug the Doggo, too, and see... Oh, speaking of Doug the Doggo, he brought me some computers. Nine of them. That's not enough 
you know, I've been waiting. We need computers for uh, to research manual depot uploading as well as power augmentation and um, production amplifier. Well, no, I guess we don't need computers for that, but we need, yeah, we need it for that. So it's quite possible that Doug will supply all those for us before we have a chance to gather all those up ourselves. And he also brought me in more turbo motors or turbo engines, motors, yeah. So we have 18 of those things. Gotta love that Doug, man. Let's go grab some steel pipes and say hello to Doug. And I need to make more depots as well, but I don't have... Uh, we need more Mercer spheres, so we got to do another exploration episode here real quick. All right. There's Doug. Here, buddy. <laughs> Jeez, man, look at that. That's insane. These are some of the most valuable things you can make in this game. Well, not counting the quantum tier. Up and, you know, up to the quantum tier. Goodness gracious, man. You rock, dude. More points for us. Okay. Let's get rid of that. Uh, all right. So what do we need? We need pipes. Pipes. Where are pipes? Pipes are here. Let's grab a couple stacks of those. I don't have these yet on the depot because I, I need more Mercer spheres. So I got to manually load those up. Go back to blueprints, get the splitters with the right side. No, with the right side, dude. That was the left side. Wait. No, we want left side, yeah. Right? No, correct. Left, right. Ugh. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, yes. We want the entrance on the left, and left meaning as you're facing and looking at the storage. Okay, so for the alignment for these, uh, for this, I want it to be aligned with these storage bins. Let's lock it in. Because the spacing here is, you know, we got one full tile and then this is another, you know, comes to the edge of this thing. And so now this comes to the edge of that thing. And the spacing is even on both sides in relation to the pattern on the ground. I think we'll be okay to get back here. You know what I should do, though, now that I think about it? I should probably line this up with the edge of here, so that way if I needed to, I could add another bin to the end of this later. I think that's what I should actually do. So that is what we shall do. Okay. So yeah, that gives us the option of, like I said, adding another, just manually adding another storage to here. And now that I think about it, if we're gonna do that, maybe we should just do that right now so that way we can get the, have the smart splitter and the flow and all that set up right from the get-go. We don't have to, you know, use the bin immediately, so. Bump you over there. And we'll get a smart splitter with, yeah, output's gotta be on that side. Move you to there. You go in there, and you go in there. Perfect, okay. All right, so we are gonna start by bringing in the three ingots, and later we will add quartz and sulfur products. <clears throat> Excuse me, so let's make this one uh, out the right output, iron ingots, and then overflow out the center. Okay, and then you will be, actually let's do this first. Let's set the center to overflow and then just copy and paste that down the line. So one less thing for me to have to manually change later. Again, laziness or efficiency. It just kind of depends on how you look at it. 
We'll make these copper ingots. And we'll make these caterium. Just because here again, it's always nice to have these ingots on hand if you need them for anything. I do remember uh, in my update 8 playthrough, there were a few different times where I needed ingots for handcrafting something and I was never storing them, so it was kind of a pain in the ass to, to get them, you know? Uh, all right, and then everything else we'll just <coughs> set up, you know, as we add, add two things. You know what we could do now that I think about it? We could actually route our steel... Uh, our steel beams, our pipe, and our reanimated SAM down here, too. Because I'm eventually going to tear down all of that storage um, and turn that into a biofuel factory. Because we're going to, later on, when it becomes available to us, we're going to want to make liquid biofuel in particular. It's the best fuel for the jetpack until you get we get up into the quantum stage with you know some of the new stuff. But I don't think that's accessible to us. Well, actually, you know what? I shouldn't say that. I don't know when the new fuel types will be accessible to us. Nevertheless, I am planning on making a biofuel factory over there. So let me think about this though. So we, we're already taking these three up with ingots. We know we're going to need quartz crystal, silica. Do we really need to mass produce black powder? I I don't know. Because here's the thing, in update eight, I automated black powder. I filled up a whole bin of it and I hardly ever used it. I mean I did use it, but in very small quantities, relatively speaking. So I don't know. Maybe what we'll do for black powder is we'll we'll set up a temporary production to make a, a batch of it and store it somewhere but not make it like a permanent thingamadoodle and if that is the case then what we can do is we can actually assign oh shit you know what though we even with that we still don't have enough if we Yeah, we still don't have enough, so I'm gonna have. I'm still gonna have to come up with a solution, Be because what I mean is, okay, so that's quartz crystal, that's silica, that's reanimated Sam. So that only leaves us one more bin here, but we have pipe and steel uh, beams that we need to get over here too. I don't really have room over here for another bin. I mean, I do, but I don't want to put another bin here because I want to keep this open. Okay, I, I'll tell you what, I'll figure out the reanimated Sam situation later. Because, you know, we only need to use that periodically, whereas we're using steel beams and pipe all of the time. So we're going to make this uh, steel beam, and we're going to make this steel pipe. And while we're at it, Let's just make this one quartz crystal. And this one can be silica. And those are all assigned. Okay, good. And like I said, I'll figure out the re reanimated SAM situation later. Uh, I just don't know how much of it we're ultimately going to need. I mean, I already have... I already have 400 of them made that I've just handcrafted. And, you know, if you look at the technology tree, we need 103 there, 151 there, 199 there. 100, yeah, I mean, we're going to need more, but after we do all of this research, are we done with it or do we need still need to use it for other things? I just don't know. So we'll, we'll worry about that when the time comes. Also, keep in mind, too, this is still, te uh, you know, quote unquote, our starter location. Uh, this isn't ultimately, at least according to my plans right now, uh, this isn't going to be our ultimate central storage location. It's just our starter storage location. Very good. Let's get these ingots hooked up. Now, I happen to know that 
uh, we're going to need, well here, let's put the, let's put this in place first. And we already know that this is five markers, two, three, four, and five. Um, yeah, actually, you know what, before we hook up the ingots, let's get the, let's get the sink hooked up. So we should be able to just, yeah, let's just come out the end of here. I think we'll go, uh, yeah, that should work. Okay, now the question is, how high does this one need to be? Um, I'm going to guess three markers, and we'll adjust if that is not correct. Uh, yeah, that was, that was too high, so less than three markers. So there's two markers, there's three, let's bring it down one. That looks correct. And we know it's straight because we used straight mode. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, we need to put power on this guy too. So uh, let's line up. Oh, go for a swim. Now okay, let's line up on you. We're facing east. Now we want to face west. I think I might have just messed up my alignment. What does it look like? No, that's good. That one looks pretty straight, too. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Well, that was lemon squeezy. We got that part set up for any overflow. Now, what we're going to need to do here is we're going to need to put down a one meter foundation for this riser to be correct. Let's see how far will it go. Let's get out of straight mode. Okay, so it'll go to there. I'm just going to put that this down here so we have it as a marker. But we should be able to act. I actually want to pull it back a little bit so it's not right in our aisle here. So let's grab a one meter. And we'll get a conveyor lift and we'll just line that up. Yeah, to the edge of there. And that should be good. All right, how many uh, do I need to go up on that? Oh, I guess I took the, that riser down from before. So let's guesstimate. There's two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe eight. Let's see if that is correct. I think we hit it. Look at that. Damn, I'm good. Sometimes. <laughs> and I'm humble, too. Okay. Let's get rid of that. And then we'll just do this little thingy here to make it look like it's actually set up on this surface. And then we should be able to run... Oh, you know what, though? Can we run that straight on and have it line up? I think maybe we can. Let's see what happens here. Okay, one, two, three, four, and just above five. Nope, damn it, Jim. Oh, nothing's ever easy, except for when it is, but it isn't this time. How do
do we deal with this? I. Okay, I know how we deal with this. What we're going to do is we're going to temporarily put a splitter here. Like so. No, that's not going to work. Um, we have to get it up at the same level as that one. Okay. Now, we just go up. Well, we got to rerun the belt now. Three, four, and five. That looks good. Looks straight. Let's make sure that it's level. I would say so. I think that looks good. Okay. Now what we do is remove these guys. And we're going to have to do that. Oh, actually, you know what we... You know what we might be able to do? We might be able to come down from here and have it... No, it's just a little too... Oh, no, you... <laughs> I just screwed it up. Because I forgot when I, we hook to the end of this, it pushes it out. Okay, let me redo that again. So much for trying to be fancy schmancy, huh? Okay, and we'll just have to put a belt in there and call it good. And you should be filling up with iron ingots. You certainly are. You should be filling up with copper ingots. And you should be filling up with cat ingots. <laughs> oh, look at that. It's a beautiful thing. All right, we'll put the iron in here, the copper in here, and the cat in there. Let's put our nine turbo engines back away for now. 27 turbo motors. That's going to give us some serious points. All right. So what is left to do in terms of functionality, not cosmetics, of our factory? Well, we need to do a couple of things. Uh, I need to route the steel and the pipes over to here somehow. I'm gonna have to, I'll figure that out off camera. Because um, I really want to do it in such a way that... I, I don't really want to run stuff in front of the waterfall because that's kind of our, you know, our gorgeous view. Um, so we want to keep that pristine. So I'll have to figure out how to do that. I might be able to actually run those underneath this catwalk. Hmm, that's an idea. Okay. Well, anyway, I'll figure that out for getting the steel and the pipe over here. Um, and then that whole area over there, like I said, will will clear out once we exhaust all of the resources. And then I also want to go around and... Um, What is this product supposed to be? And why isn't anything flowing? That is plates. Hmm. I know those plate machines are hooked up now. So why are they not flowing? In fact, do we have any plates at all? Oh, we do. Got a bunch of plates. Everybody's working. Except for your... Why are you starved for ingots? Man, I would have thought by now, especially with this being jammed up for so long that these buffers would be completely full. Why are they not?
All right, you know what I'm going to do to fix that? We're going to change this to a smart splitter. Because I, I think I understand what's happening now. It just wasn't noticeable. This is a dumb splitter, so it's just splitting 50%. And we need more than 50%. Now, you can get away with that if things down the line start to back up. But that could take a while. So, yeah, we need to make this a smart splitter. And that should fix that issue. Anyway, that kind of segues into the second thing I was going to tell you until I got completely sidetracked. Is we do want to go around the factory and make sure that all of our machines are running at 100% efficiency. Because, you know, we are going to find things like this, case in point, where, you know, things may not be running optimally. So let's make this a smart splitter, make sure the input's there, and then we'll hold down control and just replace that. And then out the... Uh, we want the center output to be set to overflow and we can explicitly set this to iron ingots or we could even put it to any either way will work and that will make sure then that this is feeding the maximum amount of ingots that this requires and will continue to do so until it backs up now that's going to temporarily cause a problem over here because this setup needs some of these ingots too. But that will that'll work itself out once all of these buffers fill up. So it'll take a little bit of time for that to happen. But it should be okay in the long run. So we just have to kind of keep an eye on it, and we, you know, and we just need to give it time too for all that kind of thing to happen. So, aside from running the steel pipe and steel beams over here, and checking all of the machines, make sure everything is running at 100% efficiency. I think we're finished, you guys, with the functional portion of this build. We still have cosmetics to do. And I, I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know what we're going to do. I've got a couple ideas, uh, but I'm not going to share those ideas with you until I decide if I'm going to actually do them. But that's going to have to be, of course, in another episode. So we're going to wrap things up here. I think the plan for the next episode is going to be to go out and do some more exploring so that we can find some more Mercer spheres, so that we can make some more depots. And uh, uh, as far as builds go... Most likely we'll get uh, silica going next and set that up over in this area like we've already talked about. I think I am I, I think I'll bring sulfur here and just store it because um, that way we have it you know when we do need to make black powder and it is also used in other recipes later on down the line. so it would be useful to have a supply of just sulfur itself here. Uh, so we'll bring it in but I, I, I don't think I'm gonna automate it. I think I'm just gonna automate um, quartz. And what else? There was one other thing I was going to say to you. Oh, yeah. And then after we get the quartz and all that set up, then the next big, big project will be to set up steel. My, What's in my head for that, for anybody who's interested, is we're going to first build a road. We're going to build a big road, like a main artery road, out to the coast. And I've brought my blueprints over uh, from update eight uh, for that. So, you know, so I already have them built. This, this is what they look like, at least the ghost version of it. And yeah, so we're going to, we're going to run a, a road all the way out to the coast. And then once that's in place, then our steel factory will be the next big project on the list because we need that to make the, the frames and the smart or the automated wiring for the space elevator. Speaking of which, if you look in the upper right hand corner of my screen, you can see that we are 902 smart plates into a thousand for the space elevator. Almost there for that particular part. Once that happens, um, then I will reroute the smart plating uh, down through the factory and into storage. And we do need to accumulate it because later on we'll need it to make modular engines. Guys, that is going to be it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, share the video, and we'll catch you all in the next episode. Bye-bye.